want to build a website, the first language that you need to learn is HTML. And in this video, we're going through the basic of HTML. And then together, we're going to build a basic website using only HTML. And by the end, you will understand HTML and will be able to use it to create basic website. So if you are ready, let's get started. HTML or Hypertext Markup Language is a pretty simple language that consists of different elements which we use to structure a web page. The element usually starts with an opening tag, which consists of the name of the element wrapped in opening and closing angle bracket. The opening tag indicates where the element begins. Similar to the opening tag, the closing tag is also wrapped in opening and closing angle bracket. But it also includes a forward slash before the element name. Everything inside the opening and closing tag is the content, but not all the elements follow this pattern. We call these empty element. It only consists of a single tag or an opening tag that cannot have any content. These elements are typically used to insert or embed something in the document. For example, the image element is used to embed an image file, and the input element is used to insert an input onto the page. Element can be placed inside other element. This is called nesting. In the example inside div element, we have an h4 element and an ul or unordered list element. And similarly, inside the unordered list element, there are three li or list item element. This is quite straightforward to understand, but when the page gets larger, nesting can be complicated. Therefore, before working with HTML, think about the layout. You can draw it out on a piece of paper, or when you get more comfortable, you can draw it on your mind. And trust me, it will help a lot. Element also have attribute which contain extra information about the element, and it will not appear in the content. In the example, the image element has two attribute, src or source, to specify the path of the image, and width to specify the width of the image in pixel. With the example, you can see that attribute should have a space between attribute and the element name. Attribute are added in the opening tag. Element can have many attribute. Attribute usually have a name and a value. But not every attribute has the same pattern. Some can exist without values, and we call them Boolean attribute. In the example, if you want to disable the button, all we have to do is passing a disabled attribute without any values. This means that the presence of the attribute represents the true value, otherwise the absent represents the four values. There are in total more than 100 elements, but 90% of the time, you will only need around 20 most common elements, and I have put them into six group. The first group is define a section. These elements are used to organize the content into different sections. They are usually self-explanatory. For example, header usually represent a group of the introduction and navigation section. Nav represent the section that contains navigation links. And the second group is define a text content. These elements are used to organize content or text blocks. They are important to accessibility and SEO or search engine optimization. They tell the browser the purpose or structure of the content. The third group is define a form. These elements can be used together to create forms that user can fill out and submit. Forms might be the most tricky part of HTML that they deserve a separate video. The next group is about image and link. They are used to insert image or create a hyperlink. And for the last group, these elements are used to add break to the web page. And you can find all the elements on developer.mozilla.org or W3School. But for beginners, you should need to know these most common elements. By default, an element can be either block level or inline element. Block level elements are the element that always start on a new line and takes up the full width available. Inline elements are the element that does not start on a new line, and it only takes up as much width as necessary. Two elements that represent block level and inline element are div and span. 
In the example, you can see that div element take three lines, whereas span element only take one line. But the question is, how do we know which ones are block level element and which ones are inline element? Well, unfortunately, you need to memorize them. The easiest way is to remember inline element and the rest are block element. If we look back at the most common HTML element, inline element include span, input, button, label, text area, emit, anchor tag, and break. There are other topics in HTML. First, commenting. The purpose of comment is to include notes in your code, to explain your logic, or simply to organize your code. HTML comments are wrapped in the special markers and they are ignored in the browser. And the next topic is HTML entities. For example, you want to show the text. The PE tag defines a paragraph, but the browser interprets PE as an opening tag for the new element. In this case, we can use HTML entity like in the example. And lastly, in modern web, we can display emoji in HTML. All right, so let's move on to some beginner common mistake. First, tag or element names. Tag or element names are case insensitive, which means that it can be written in lowercase or uppercase, but it is recommended that you write everything in lowercase. And the second most common mistake is closing tag. Failing to include a closing tag is a super common mistake for a beginner. Therefore, whenever you create an opening tag, immediately put a closing tag. And the third common mistake in nesting, if you look at the example, it is wrong. The tags have to open and close in a way that they are inside or outside one another. And the last common mistake is single quote and double quote. If you look at the example, this is wrong. You cannot make single quote and double quote together. One tip is that always use double quote and use HTML entities if needed. But individual HTML elements are not enough to create a website. So let's see what more we need to build a simple website from scratch. First, let's open Visual Studio Code. In the folder of your choice, let's create a new file and name it index.html. In the index.html file, type exclamation mark and press enter. You will see something like this. This is the minimal code that an HTML document should have to make up a website. And in here we have first doc type. Apparently there was some history about HTML that we have to include doc type for everything to work correctly. Next we have HTML element. It wraps all the content on the page. It also known as root element. And we should always include lang attribute to declare the language of the page. The head element is a container for everything you want to include, but not the content showing to the user. And the first meta element is used to set the character set to be UTF-8, which includes most characters from written languages. And the second meta element specifies the browser view part, and this setting is for mobile optimized site. After the meta element, we have title element. This sets the title of the page. And lastly, we have the body element. It contains all the content on the page. All right, so now we have to start a code. Let's build a pancake recipe page, and we're going to use the content from our recipe. All right, so in our index.html, first let's change the title to be pancake recipe. And if we save that, you can see that the title has changed. And you also notice here that I'm using live server so that whenever we change something, the page would be reloaded. All right, so in our body, we want to create three elements. The first one would be header. You can type the name and press enter or tap. It will complete the element. And uh, yeah, the second element would be main. And the last element would be footer. In the header, we're going to have the logo and the navigation. For the logo, we're going to use the div. Uh, with the content of let's say our recipe and for the navigation we're going to use the nav element and inside here we're going to use the unordered list element and inside this let's create the first list item and in here let's create an hyperlink by saying a and the href 
we're going to pass in an ID. This one would be ingredient. And the content is also going to be ingredient. And let's copy this and paste it. And for the second link, we're going to uh, say steps here. And the content would be steps. And for the last link, we're going to say subscribe. And subscribe here. All right, so now we are done with the header. You can see the logo and the navigation here. Let's move on to the main section. In the main section, first we're going to have the H1 for the title. So let's copy the title over. And I'm also going to move this to my second screen so that I can see it better. And next we want to have an image. And a good place to get a free image is Unsplash. So let's say Unsplash here. And it go there. And we're going to search for Pancake. And let's use the first one and copy the link address and paste it here. And for the alternative text, let's just say pancake for now. And now we have the image, but it's quite huge. So let's put a width of, let's say, uh, 250 pixels. All right, looks better now. All right, so after the image, let's create an A2 and let's say ingredient. In the H2, we also want to have the ID so that the link know where to go. Uh, it's going to be the same here. And uh, all right, now we have the heading. After this, let's create an order list. In here, let's create a first list item. For the first list item, let's add a input and the time would be checkbox. And also let's copy the ingredient over. So the first one would be purpose flower. And let's copy this element few more time. And let's copy the ingredient over. All right, so now we have the ingredient and because we are using order list, you can see the number here and also the checkbox, which is the input with type checkbox. All right, so let's move on to the step. So similarly to the ingredient, let's create an A2 and let's say here steps and it also put an ID of step here as well. And uh, after this, let's create an S4 and let's say step one and a P, which is a paragraph element as well. And let's copy the uh, step over. All right. And similarly, we're going to have the step number two and the paragraph as well. And let's copy the content. All right, so now we have uh, almost everything for the main. And let's actually add an HR to separate the main content with the footer. And in the footer, let's create an H6 and let's put subscribe as a content. All right. And after that, let's create a form. And actually, the H6 would have an ID of subscribe as well. All right. And for the form, we don't need the action for now. And inside this element, we're going to have first an um, input. And this time, we're going to use type text. And let's also add a placeholder. And let's say enter email address. And after this, we want to have a button. And let's say submit. All right, so now we have the input and the button. And actually, in the form, I want to say here uh, on submit equal to alert and let's say uh, subscribe. And now if we try to press the submit button, you can see an alert say subscribed. All right, so now we are almost done. The next thing we need to ask 
is the name of the author. So in here, I'm going to use the HTML entity to uh, have the copyright mark. So let's say copy here and let's copy the name of the author. Add uh, our recipe. Recipe.com. All right, if we save that, now we have our website and you can see here that there's no spacing between the form and the uh, name of the author. So let's actually add a break here. All right, so now it looks much better. All right, so that concludes the website. So that concludes the video. If you want to help me out, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, follow me on Twitter and check out Dev Challenges. Otherwise, stay happy coding and see you in the next video. Bye.